in management. I see a bunch of people in here being in management. When you're in management, you do not give people public reviews. Amen? Huh? Is it still home? Yeah, bring it. It should be on my desk. Black portfolio. Um, one thing you can do to get fired in the professional setting is to give people a public review. I, I've been in a situation where even uh, a manager that was against me, he managed to say something publicly while talking to me and said something negative. I could have got him fired. I didn't because I'm a believer. I said, right there, you just gave me enough ammunition fire. You don't even know it. I could have said he gave me a, a negative review right in front of my peers. You close the door, you give them their review, and that's between you and your manager, right? You don't ever, he don't ever call you to the conference room, call everybody else. I'm going to give Dolores her review. You did well on this point, but you, did, you don't do that, right? The one time it's going to be legitimate to give everybody the public review is at the judgment seat of Christ. CJ, step forward. God's going to give CJ his performance review right in front of us all. Ray June, step forward. Here are the tools I gave you. Here are the resources. Here's the talents I gave you. Here's the gifts. What did you do with them? I gave you certain gifts, certain opportunities. You didn't take them. You got saved and you set. No reward. You got saved and you started a ministry, but you were trying to build your own name. You, you were trying to build your brand. You weren't doing that for me. 10,000 people came to me. But you were in it for, to, for your own. You were trying to brand build. You don't get a single reward. I know what was in your heart. You stood up in church and gave $1,000, but you did it for show. You wanted so-and-so to see you balling like that. No reward. You gave $2, but that's all you had. Great rewards. I don't know the nature of all the rewards. I've, I've done some studies, but Jesus promised this. Even somebody who gives you a, a, a disciple, a cold cup of water will be re remembered. Who go through your life, everything you did good from the heart, even giving somebody a dollar, holding the chair out, opening the door for, for mom lad, saying, baby, I, I don't have much today, but I just want to give you this, this, this gift card for $10, give you something to eat. What you do from your heart, God will reward everything. Well, that's going to take too much time for him to go through everybody's life, right? Every instance. But guess what? There's no such thing as time. God's going to go throughout all of history, cover everybody's stuff one by one your whole life, and there's still no time ran off the clock. And when he finishes, it's an eternity waiting. So what we do, we were saved by grace. Thank God, I'm in the book by grace, not based on performance, not work, but I'm rewarded by works. Say it with me. Saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast, but rewarded by works. We won't all get the same thing. So when we look at this area here of, um, of sin and salvation, it's very important to understand some things. Um, so when Stephanie asked this question, um, um, sins and iniquities, there can be some nuances there. So um, we talked once before about this. Um, Pastor Darrell did a beautiful lesson on this. I don't know which lesson it was, but we were talking about chapter breaks. And, and we talked about uh, the fact that in the Bible, it's the inspired word of God, right? We have a translation here. It's English, right? And so some of the English words don't translate well from the Greek. Greek is very precise, right? So, God, you know, when the Bible says in the fullness of time, God sent his son, the fullness of time has so many implications. For the first time in the history of mankind, we had a precise language that was dominating civilization right before Jesus came. God waited until we had a language, the most precise language ever on earth, Greek. And right after Alexander the Great conquered known civilization and forced Greek language on everybody, God sent Jesus and the New Testament was written in Greek. And it's the most precise language. It's the language now of math and science and history. All the great historians, all the great doctors, they still take the Hippocratic oath from Hippocrates, the father of medicine, Herodotus, the father of history, Greek, Socrates, Plato. All these philosophers and thinkers came from Greek culture. It's the language. That's why we say delta is a difference. And two, two things change. We call it the delta. It's Greek. Greek is so precise. We say, I love pizza. We say, I love my mama. Greek don't do that. There's five words for love. I don't love CJ the way I love mama. You know, I phileo, CJ. With grace, I eros, CJ. With God, I agape, CJ. I love CJ. I love grace. I love God in English. But in Greek, phileo, eros. Oh, yes. Agape. 
the way God loves. It's precise language. So God waited until Alexander the Great came and conquered known civilization, imposed the Greek language upon everybody, and then Jesus came and they wrote the gospel in Koine Greek, common Greek, precise language. So in the, in the, in the Bible, what Pastor Darrell taught on so eloquently is that in Isaiah 53, uh, since, we, since we know that the chapter breaks are not inspired, so the Bible is very, the Bible, the Bible is very, every word, every word. We've we got in Bishop, in, in our lad uh, fellowship hall, we have his favorite scripture, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. We believe every word of scripture is inspired, every word. But we have a translation, and sometimes the translation don't capture all the words. So we have to look underneath the English and see the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic, the three languages of scripture are written in, to understand the precision that God intended for us to. And so when we look at the chapters in the Bible, we look at beginning at chapter Isaiah 52, we realize that the chapter breaks are not inspired. When the authors wrote Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, the three languages of scripture, there were no chapter breaks. They wrote on one continual scroll. And man, out of his desire to organize the scriptures in the 13th century, and the guy that did it was really doing it in the back of a horse and buggy. He was like, well, we should organize it. And he, he's the primary one that did it. But he organized the Bible in chapters and verses which we yet use today. And I thank God for that. It gives us an opportunity to refer to a certain passage. But many times in scripture, you find a thought that's in the middle starting a chapter. Some places, the chapter should have started earlier. The chapter should keep, should keep going. Last week, we were reading 1 John, and, and chapter 2, verse 1 is really part of chapter 1. He's talking about sin, and then he gets into chapter 2. Uh, verse one, he wraps it up. That should have been part of chapter one. It's easy. Uh, let's see that. Let's see that. Let's see that example real quick, and then go to Isaiah fifty-two to answer Stephanie's question. Go back to First John, first chapter. And just read through that. Just read through that beginning of verse, like like six or something. CJ, you preaching today? Well, let me warm your voice up. Beginning, 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 verse six. And here's the mic, so they can understand you on Zoom. Yeah, First John one, beginning verse six. Yeah, when the Bible here also speaks about a lot of people are going to say, look at the Lord, go to this uh, electronic media, Twitter. If we say that we have fellowship with him and, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Okay, go forward and tell us about the blood. You know, we want the churches that talk about the cross all the time. The blood, all the time. We say about it all the time. But we don't want Peter, Paul, James, John. They started it. And the blood, the blood cleanses us. I love that. I can preach that all every Sunday. You're going to hear about the blood in this church. You ain't going to leave here without hearing about the blood. Give God a hand praise. Before you leave here today, you're going to hear about the blood again. <laughs> read, read, sir. If we say that we have no sin, uh -huh. we deceive ourselves, uh -huh. and the truth is not in us. We covered that. There's no such thing as a perfect Christian. Only Jesus was perfect. You're in a house that has a sin nature in it. You constantly got to fight your desire. Sometimes you win, the Bible says, and sometimes you lose. Paul said it himself. We don't say, oh, I'm just going to lose. No, we fight it. We resist. We resist him. We resist the devil. But sometimes you find yourself, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have thought. I, I hope I can fix that relationship now based on what I said. I got mad and I said, I hope this relationship isn't beyond because words hurt worse than physical wounds. Physical wounds heal. Words go in deep. And sometimes people tell you what you said to them 20 years ago. You forgot you said, but they remember what you said and how you said it. And so sometimes you find yourself, I hope I can fix what I brought in this relationship with those words. I hope that there's forgiveness. And as believers, when somebody comes to you and says, I'm so sorry, you have an obligation, not a, a, a choice, not a prerogative. You have an obligation to forgive just as Christ forgave you. You have no choice but to forgive. You have no right to hope. Sins in this blood and forgave you of every nasty, dirty, sinful thing, thought, action, word that you have. You have no right now to hold anything against anybody. And matter of fact, when they even if they, even if they don't ask you for forgiveness, a couple of days in that thing, say, Lord, I just forgive them. The way you forgave me of all my mess, I forgive. If they don't never ask, 
Something you can't let, let go of something to the to, they ain't never asked me to forgive them. God does not require them to ask you for forgiveness. That's on them. They are sinner. You forgive because you're a saint. Amen. That's on your account. You've been blood washed. Jesus told a parable about a man, a rich man who forgave a poor man a big debt. Let's say millions of dollars. He's so thankful. He went out and found somebody that owed him $10. He couldn't pay him. He grabbed him by the throat. That's us. If we can't forgive people that messed us over and God's forgiven us of everything, you forgive them whether they, whether they ask or not and you move on with your life and be a blessing to your community and your family and the people God put around you. You forgive. Even as Christ for God's sake, even if God for Christ's sake has forgiven us. Forgive even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven us. That's Bible. Read, sir. If we confess our sins. If we confess our sins. He is faithful. He's faithful and just. And just to forgive us our sins. And John, Pastor John did a beautiful job explaining why it's justice because Christ died for our sins so God can't accuse him for us. God can't make Jesus pay and us pay because God's too just for that. Since he made Jesus pay, we can shout. <laughs> He's just. He's not going to charge us. He's not going to get Christ for our sins and get us. I see. Give God, give Christ a hand and pray. He paid the price. I don't have to pay for my sins. That doesn't mean I'm going to go sin. I don't have to pay for them. <laughs> if CJ gave me a credit card and said, look, I'm going to get past, I'm going to bless you. Here's $5,000 and, and go to Macy's. Get, you know, whenever you need something, go to Macy's and get something. Don't you know I wouldn't go out there and max that card out day one and say, oh, well, see this. Yeah, I ain't got to pay for it. I'm going to get this suit. And I don't need them shoes. I'm going to need just in case this. I'm come back. By. What, 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 what kind of honor would that be to this gift? He says, when you ever need something, you find you need something, you need a suit, a new pair, just, just use this card, go get it. So he expects me when, when I, if I, Easter Sunday, I need some shoes. Well, I can't pay for them. TJ gave me his card. I'm going to go get me some shoes. I'm just going, you know, thank God for CJ. You know, and, and two years later, I said, oh, my suit's worn out. I got this wedding. TJ gave me that card. I'm not going to go just max the thing out because I can. Christ died for all of our sins. They're paid for. I'm not going to go sin just because they're paid for. That's just wrong. And, and the, Bible, the Bible condemns it. Romans 6.1, what shall we say to these things? Shall we, con then, shall we continue to sin so grace may abound? God forbid. How can we that are dead to sin live in that mess? I don't want to go back to that mess. God brought me out of some stuff. How many, how many know God brought you out of some stuff, some mess? I ain't going back to that mess. Can I give you an example? Y'all may not agree with this example. Let me just use it. I used to love chitlins and hog dolls. I used to love them growing up. I used to love chitlins. I used to love them. Chitlins. I used to love chitlins growing up. Love them. New Year's Day chitlins. I, I, never, knew, I never knew why they smelled so bad, but they, they boil them. And then when I got in college, I found that that was the intestines. And that, and that they would clean the boo-boo out of the limbo. And that's what they were doing. I ain't going back to that mess. I ain't eating chitlins no more. I ain't eating no pig intestines. They do taste good, but I ain't going back to that mess. Just scrubbing the boo-boo off, off the food. Uh-uh, I don't do that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I ate them growing up. I got them from, I, got, I think I got them from my Mount Rushmore. My, my <laughs> but, here, but no, there's certain things you don't go back to. You just, God delivers you out of stuff. You don't go back to it. Amen? Amen. I got the most, excuse me, sir. I got the most wonderful woman in the world. What I look like on a date nap? What I look like on a date nap? Putting the profile up. And I'm married to this woman. I ain't going back to that mess. Some of you God deliver from this and that. And you don't smoke no more. You don't drink no more. You don't party no more. You wash, you clean. You ain't going back to that mess. We got gang bangers that was in the hood and God brought them out. They saved and I sanctified, filled the Holy Spirit. They're not going back to that mess. So the Bible says, how can we the dead to sin living on? In other words, I ain't going back to that mess. Galatians 5. Therefore, uh, uh, Galatians 5.1. Uh, give me Galatians 5.1. I know it's 5.1. Be not entangled. Therefore, Christ has said to you. Give me Galatians 5.1. Is that, okay, read, uh-huh. There we go. Stand therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. 
Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Give God a hand of praise. I'm not going back to the mess. God delivered me. Why should I be bound? We got sidetracked, but God is good. It's all good. Read, sir. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Read. If we say that we have not sinned. We have said that we have not sinned. We make him a liar. You, you make God a liar. Now, you, number one, he told you earlier, you a liar. When you say you haven't sinned. Now, he said you make God a liar. <laughs> don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Confess your sin. Don't say I ain't got no sin. I'm, I've been, you know, we used to sing a song and hold this a long time ago. I've been saved all day and I'm glad. You know, and, and, my, and the past, I love him. He's in, he's in heaven. Got a great reward. Lived a holy life. Bad theology on this point. He said, can you say of all the sins of the day, I've not committed one. You know, he raised his hand, won't people kind of, you know, but, you know, we don't, you know, uh -uh. I'm an unworthy servant. I'm confessing my sins. Somewhere along the line, God, I probably got off and didn't even know it. And one thing I'm not going to do is get into pride. Show my hands, I've not sinned today. Raise yours hands if you're not sinned. I'm not getting that pride. I'm not going to drag you into it. So that, that right there. But I thank God for his life. I thank God for his teaching. He helped me live holy. He taught me that, 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 that it can be done. You can say no, men. And those temptations and when you're in college, give God a hand, praise you can't say no. He taught me that. You don't have to go there. You don't have to go there because the world goes there. Everybody does it. That's not true. He lived it. I lived it because he lived it. Give God a hand, praise. You can wait. The God opens that box for you. Glory to God. Give God a hand, praise. Read, sir. Read, sir. And his word is not in us. If you, if you walk around talking, you sin free. The word's not in you because you claim to be Jesus. Read. Okay, that, so that's in chapter one, right? Now, but read, read, read chapter two, verse one. My little children, uh, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. See, that's the point. That continues. That's part, that should be part of chapter. I'm writing these things you won't see. That's not a new thought. So that chapter break, we, that's why we say the chapter breaks are not inspired. Praise the Lord. The titles are here, evangelists and sermon. God bless you. Amen. On the road, faithful brother and sister hit that highway. We do not expect them to see, to see them every Sunday, saints, nor do we expect to see Pastor John and Pastor Dale every Sunday. They live out of town. We don't, but we are so blessed when they can make it. Pastor John is sick, by the way. I, I think he's doing better, but some members of his family are sick. Also, his, his Fanny's coming out of the hospital. He's going to pick her up today. So, uh, and, and even at that, he said, do you think I should take off? I said, brother, I mean, just even ask, should I come? I mean, just, just, I appreciate the attitude of that brother. Like, brother, please stay there. But he wanted to check in with his pastor to see it was okay for the social pastor to be home, even though he had all that going on. And I truly beat my heart. I said, brother, I need you here. He would have been on the road. I thank God for faithful brothers like that. And we have faithful saints who live out of town that, that, that Pastor Darrell, Pastor John, the times that, that show us by precept and example, what faithfulness looks like. Thank God for you. And we do not expect you to see them every Sunday. And, and, but when we see them, we're so blessed because they're faithful. Amen? So there's an example here of how that chapter didn't end right there. That's the same thought. My, children, my little children are, right, uh, are righteous to you so you won't sin. It's all talking about sin, right? What we've been talking about. Now, Stephanie's question was, what is Isaiah 53 and 5? So we go to Isaiah 53 now. Anybody, everybody go to Isaiah 53. Can you put it up on the screen? Isaiah 53. Now keep in mind, the New Testament was written entirely in Greek, Koine Greek, the most precise language ever on earth, ever. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, but portions of 2 Chronicles and Daniel written in Aramaic. So the Old Testament has two languages, Aramaic and Hebrew, primarily Hebrew, but because of the captivity, the Jews were forced to learn other languages. So as a result, Daniel, which was a, which covers the time of captivity, and Second Chronicles, which covers the time of captivity for Israel. Parts of those are written in Aramaic. We go to Isaiah 53 and begin, begin, begin reading at first one. Now, now since, you, since you've been around, been around a while, before you open that, since you've been around a while, some of us are familiar with this passage. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you, son. Brought all three of them. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll give this particular thing next Sunday then, but uh, it, it, this, this does have something I want to do. I'll do this toward the end. But um, there is a, um, there is a, the saints who've been around a while, we're familiar with Isaiah 53. Now, I know you can't, because you read, you read it. I don't want the pastors and ministers, y'all, y'all excluded. But some of y'all already know, I know First Lady knows, I'm exclude you too. Uh, <laughs> raise your hand if you, if you can quote Isaiah 53. 
plus have been around a while. This is one of our favorite passes. Oh, so if, you, if you want a gift card, you ready to quote, quote Isaiah 53 and 1, raise your hand. Some of y'all can quote it, but you don't want to be the, the, you don't want the glory. I get it. I get it. Anybody on Zoom? Isaiah 53 and 1? I, 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 love, I, I love our church here because they ain't got to worry about nobody peeping and claiming the credit. <laughs> Even though they're on Zoom, they're doing right. Anybody on Zoom? Report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Close enough. Who has believed our report? We love that. that that's good preaching. And so whom in the Lord have, have been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender point, the root of a dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, but we shall see him. The beauty we should desire him. He's wounded by it, bruised by iniquity. Oh, glory to God. He was smitten and singing of God. Ooh. Powerful passage. I mean, that, that'll get me shouting quicker than just about any. <laughs> you know, they, 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 they put something on, on, on the church chat. The chat, chat been on fire. It's the word fire. It's fire. Is that right now? It's fire. Okay. That church chat is fire right now. I, I, I've been shouting off what's on there. I mean, and they got me going. Uh, they got me going again yesterday. But um, this passage here is fire. You know, and starting, I start, I love, and preaching, I love starting with who has believed our report? Whose report do you believe? I mean, I, I, there hasn't been, been a preacher in America worth his salt that hadn't preached on, on some point. Whose report you believe? Who you believe? But the chapter, as beautifully as it doesn't start there. Read, read, read just a couple of verses down. Read, read down Isaiah 53, 1, and say, two, and, and say verse 1 and 2. Who has believed our report? Mm -hmm. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Mm -hmm. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant mm -hmm. and as a root out of a dry ground. Uh-huh. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we see and him, when we shall see him, there's no beauty. There is no beauty that we should desire. Him. Uh huh. Now, now, I mean, I, I could go on all day with that because uh, I'm about to start preaching again. We do. Now, he's who's he talking about here? Jesus. So I was 53 is talking about Jesus, this suffering servant, right? But back up to 52, and Pastor Darrell did a great lesson on this. Back up to chapter 52. I wish I knew where it was, Pastor. You, you did this lesson on uh, Isaiah 52 and 53. But back up to 52. Is it verse 17 where this chapter should actually start? Give me 52. Give me chapter 52. There's no 17. I'm sorry? Okay, get, so back up, to, back up to where it talks about my suffering servant. Behold, my righteous servants are just by many. Verse 13. Okay, so in Isaiah 52, verse 13, give me that. Start reading that. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. So God starts talking about a servant, right? Back up to verse 12. Give me 12. For ye shall not go out with haste, mm -hmm. nor go by flight, mm -hmm. for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your re reward. So, and, and, and that's a butchered word again in English, and, and it's, it's really, really rear guard. Rear guard would be your rear guard. And, and that's another English butchering, but we'll talk about that later. But you see how God's talking about how he will go fight for Israel? And now the thought shifts. He, talks, he starts talking about a servant. That's where the chapter should start. He talks about protecting Israel and being with Israel. Then he starts talking about this servant. So, chapter 53 really should start in 52 13. Now, read 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. My servant, I'm have a wise servant. So we don't know who he's talking about yet. Read. He shall be exalted and extolled. Okay, it's going to be a servant that's exalted. Hmm, Israel doesn't know what he's talking about. Some servant is going to be wise. He's going to be, he's a servant, but he's going to be exalted. And, it, and people are going to praise him. Interesting. Who you talking about, God? Go ahead. And be very high. He shall be very high. God's going to exalt his servant very high. Hmm, interesting thought. Read. As many were. Uh, astonished. Astonished. Uh -huh, astonished. <laughs> At the. So he's going to astonish some people. Many are going to be astonished by him. Read. His visage was so marred more than any man. His body is going to be so messed up. That's going to be more physically beaten than any man. Okay, this is a strange servant. Israel doesn't know who he's talking about. Jesus hadn't been revealed. God's going to have some servant. He's going to be wise and prudent. He's going to be exalted. People are going to praise him, but he's going to be beaten to the point where you don't recognize his body more than anybody else has been beaten on earth. Hmm. Read. And his form more than the sons of men. He's going to take a beating like nobody else in history took. Read. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. He, but with, his, with the blood that comes out of the beating, his blood's going to sprinkle many nations. Israel doesn't understand this at this point. 
This serpent's gonna take a beating like no other, and somehow his blood's gonna sprinkle many nations. The Jews are going, well, who's this? Read. Or that which had not been told them shall they see. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see some stuff you never even dreamed of with this servant. Read. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. You can't even imagine how this is gonna play out. God is talking to Israel. They don't understand it. Read. That's now, it. now it goes on, the thought continues. Who has believed our report? Do you believe it? <laughs> I just told you something. Do you believe it? You believe it's gonna be a servant that's exalted? He's gonna be beaten half to death, but the blood's gonna sprinkle many nations. He's gonna be exalted and praised. Do you believe this? Who believes that report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I told you it's gonna be astonished. I told you the king's gonna shut their mouth and not understand this. It's gonna be an astonishing thing. But somebody, somebody is gonna have it revealed to him. Read. Where he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. He's gonna grow up before him as a tender plant, beautiful young child. And as a root out of a dry ground. In a place where there's no water and, 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 and no life, this plant's gonna grow. Read. He hath no form nor comeliness. Uh -huh. And when and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is going to be beaten. There's, there, there's nothing to the point. There's nothing you can really do for him. Read. He is despised and rejected of men. He is, men are going to despise him and reject him. A man of sorrows. He's going to have sorrow in his life. And acquainted with grief. He's going to know grief very well. Who is this? He took a beating. He's despised. He's rejected. But yet he's God's servant. They're going to beat him to the point his, his blood comes out. But the blood is going to be metaphorically used to cover many nations. What else about him? And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. We didn't. We shunned him too. Israel. We shunned him. Israel. Isaiah is a prophet. We looked at his condition and turned away. You ever seen anybody in bad condition and, and you could have helped them, but they just, it's just so messed up, you just turned away? You ever, had, you, had a, you ever had a really bad homeless person that you really could help, but they were so filthy looking and so you know, messed up, you just didn't, you said you're gonna get Jeremy trying to help him. I remember I rolled my window down and, and just, just enough crack to get the dollar through the window because I didn't want the handshake and I didn't want to, you know, because it was, it was just, just too much nastiness with the prayer. I wanted to help them, but I, I, you know, they like to shake your hand when you give them money if you ever do that. And, and this one, I said, ooh, ooh. I just cracked the window and I just slid the money through the crack because I didn't want to give the handshake. I wanted to help, but it was just too much. The, the, the writer saying, you look at Jesus, it's so bad, just turn your eyes. You want to help, but it's just, we, here's the word, we, we shunned him too, read. He was despised and we esteemed him not. He was despised and we didn't go help. Southern Israel, Southern Israel. He's prophesying about how Israel's going to treat Jesus. Not us now, not us. We know we came to Jesus as I was. We're wounded and sad, right? But Israel rejected him. Read. Surely he hath borne our griefs. This servant has borne our grief. Read. And carried our sorrows. Carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Yet we didn't. Jesus was here to carry our sins, but we just, now he, he, God got him. That's why he's up on that cross. That's what the Jews were saying. It's not to the church. This is to the Jews. Isaiah was written to the Jews, prophesying about Jesus. Read. But he was wounded for our transgressions. But people, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Israel didn't understand what John was writing. Stephanie's question was, is there a difference between transgressions and iniquities. So a question came from Isaiah 53 and 5 that he just read. Go ahead and finish that out just a little bit more and we'll answer a question. All we like sheep have gone astray. Mm -hmm. We have turned everyone mm -hmm. to his own way mm -hmm. and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us. This is Isaiah prophesying about Jesus to Jews that there's going to come a time when God's servant is going to be punished and God's going to lay on him the iniquity of us all. Thank you, sir. I was witnessing to a Jewish woman and, and, and she was, didn't believe in Jesus. And I said, who is this in Isaiah 53? Here? The boy, everybody's name that you all rejected. She got mad at me. She ended up firing me <laughs> later when she became my boss over, over Jesus. She told me, she let me know she was firing me and Jesus. But she couldn't answer the question. She went back to her priest. They couldn't answer the question. I said, this is Jesus. 
You want you believe in the Old Testament? This is Jesus. This is Jesus whom you crucified. He's both Lord and Christ. He couldn't do nothing with it. People, I had a pastor tell me a long time ago, when you give people the gospel, people either get, get saved or they get mad. She got mad. She became my boss. She fired me. She let me know on what though I'm firing you and Jesus. You know, I'm firing both of y'all. But as I, some of y'all know the story, the next time I saw her, I was making double what they were paying me. And, 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 and I let her know how well I was doing. The Lord sent her right to the restaurant while I was sitting, and I let her know. It was for me to let her know. The next time I heard her, her, her voice, her name, she had been fired. I, I, I didn't send her $20 and rub it in, but, you know, nothing like that. But, 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 but Stephanie's question, Stephanie's question, she sent a question in saying, is there a difference between these transgressions and iniquities? And uh, so if you look at the um, um, underlying Hebrew there, there are two words. One, one, one is more like a, um, a crime and one is more like a sin. And so um, how many know that, uh, you know, this, this is a tricky question. Uh, let, me, let me just answer this way. I, I, want to, I get what Sherman's answer. He, I, you know, I, I was telling Daryl, don't, don't, don't y'all hate me. Don't, don't hate me, okay? Sometimes I get too honest. Mom says you, talk too, you tell too much sometimes. So the pastors and I, when we meet, we always talk about uh, the two answers. I mean, we were talking one day, and I told him, I said, I, said, I, like, to, I like to hear most of all what Sherman and Bernard are going to say to a question. <laughs> I mean, and so we had a good laugh about it because they come from places that, 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 you know, people don't always come from. It's some place unique. So, um, uh, but I'd like to hear um, Sherman's answer to this. All right. Um, so if you're doing 55 in a 45 mile an hour zone, are you sinning? And I want to hear Bernard's answer. So <laughs> mom said, what? You left the angels five miles back. <laughs> okay. And, and, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say there's a right or wrong answer here. I mean, so we're not trying to be defended. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious as to what, because a lot of this is, uh, is uh, yeah, well, anyway, so, 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 so we're not, we're not doing it. We're not doing it right or wrong here on it. I'm just, I want to hear your thoughts, right? Now, the saints might say, oh, I'm not, you know, my opinion is right. But this, 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 is, this is an interesting area. This is an interesting area. If you area. commit a crime, so, are you okay, committing wait, a is, sin? Are you, no, are you ready? This if you commit a crime, are I'm, you committing a sin? Okay, so I'm saying you're going 40, you're going 55 in a 45 mile an hour speed zone. Are you sinning? You commit the crime, so are you uh, committing a sin? Well, no, I'm no, I'm asking the questions here now. <laughs> 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 nice job, Bernard. You know, I've I've actually tried that in, in meetings with my managers to turn the question around, and they say, "What did you do wrong?" I say, "Well, what do you think we did wrong?" He says, "No, I'm asking the question, you know." Uh, <laughs> but no, but uh, but no, what do you think, Bernard? I think you're committing a crime. Sin is questionable. Okay, okay. You think you're committing a crime? Sin is questionable. I'm not saying it, it, it's in black and white. Where the Bible's black and white, we're black and white. Amen. What the Bible says, this is a sin. I'm telling you, it's a sin. I, I don't care who you are. What, you know, I'm. <laughs> I love, I love standing in the book. I like being in the book. You know, I need to be more sensitive about what folks told, but I'm like, that's the book. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> but where, where's kind of you know, that's where I am. You know, so I, I got you, Sharon. I want to hear, hear what uh, Tyler says next. What do you think? It's the right question to ask. It's the right question to ask. Okay, Sharon. Okay. I'm about, I'm about to I'm about to give you your your I'm 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 about to, I'm about to give you your I'm about to give you your uh I'm I'm about, I'm about to give you your thing with Sharon said. Oh this, Sharon can, Sharon can you I know you may not be as eloquent this time. Sharon is gonna give the answer again. Okay. It, it's hard, it's hard to reproduce. It's hard to reproduce. It's hard to reproduce brilliance that's spontaneous on the spot again. But Sarah is gonna give her answer again for those on Zoom. What I said was, every every crime is not a sin because the people who are in the underground railroad, you know, you have to ask were they sinning or were they, you know, not sinning. And sin, it you have ethics and you have crimes. So if it's unethical, it's more it falls more into the sinning category. And also, I said if we're we're out of time this will be the last part of the lesson any other thoughts on that i'll give you my my two cents again this is not this is not 
ironclad scripture. This is my best understanding. All right, so there was a time when it was wrong, it was against the law to preach the gospel. Okay? And what did the apostles say? We ought to obey God rather than men. When the law violates the Bible, one of them got to go. I'm not chunking the Bible out. The law got to go. There's going to come a time when in, 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 toward the end where you're not going to be allowed to preach about Jesus. It's going to be against the law. And guess what? Guess what? Some brave souls are going to do. Preach Christ and be executed. So the, as Sharon was saying, uh, but, but uh, so we have, as Sharon was saying, we have categories here. We have spiritually, is it right? That's number one. Then we have ethically, is it right? Some things are spiritually okay, but ethically, I mean, uh, uh, ethically okay, but spiritually maybe not, you know? And then, and then morally, is that really the, is the moral thing to do? So we have to have, deal in those three arenas. And, but, but the bottom line is where the Bible speaks in terms of spiritual things, that supersedes everything. Then we did with ethics, then we did deal with morals, right? So this is why you don't, for example, it, 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 do you marry your second cousins? <laughs> yeah. Did it, okay, okay, okay. Some, 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 something, did they do that? Did they, just, just wrong, you know? I mean, just wrong. And, 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 and so we have to deal in three arenas. You know, that, that's something that's just morally wrong, right? Based on morals, right? Right. And so, um, and so morality is a cultural thing. There are certain things that are moral in one culture, hear me, and immoral in others. There are certain things that are moral. Uh, mor morality is a historical thing. There were certain things back in history that were moral that today are not. Go back and watch some Seinfeld episodes and see how the 80s is different from now. Some things were morally acceptable. Some things, so our morals change. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you did not. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you, I think you, I think you got most of them right there. And and uh, and and around that definition of we stand, as we round the definition out, I, Stephanie, I'm trying to answer your question in one sentence. <laughs> we might have to pick it back up next Sunday. Let's stand. Um, oh, 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 okay, okay. So, so my point, my question is this. My point is this. Okay, so the Bible. Here's what the Bible says. Okay, so it says it's a conscience thing. I think if you think it's a sin to be speeding, it is a sin. That the Bible says if our heart condemns us, because some people can go into a pool hall and play pool, and, and, and there's no sin in it. There's no sin in playing pool. Others, others were raised, ooh, I think I'd be sinning if I went in and played pool. And to them, it is a sin. And the Bible says him that think it's a sin, to him, it is a sin. I think it's a conscious thing. If speeding doesn't bother you, I don't think speeding in itself is a sin, all right? Because there are laws that, 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 that violate the law, man's law is not a sin. I think the guideline is, as a principle, Obey every ordinance of man. But I think if you're going five miles over the limit, clearly you are not sinning to me. You know, you're speeding is 45, you're going 50. I don't think you stop says you're going to obey the law and you're guilty at one point, you're guilty at all. So if 55, 51 is a sin. <laughs> so for me, it's your comments. Into speed, then you are in sin. And I can go, I can show you scripture says that, that, that. Some believe something just like the eating meat thing. Some believe you can't eat meat off of the idols. That's it. They're good with it. Amen? So, my, one of those gray areas depends on your conscience. Right. Ryan, her review in public, right? In, in front of her coworkers, right? There's no, there's no Bible that's that, right? But ethically, there's a problem, right? So, ethics are, ethics are a different spectrum. And the spiritual stuff. We have black and white spiritual stuff. We have we have things that are ethically wrong, you know, but they're not spelled out in scripture, but we understand that because of how God made us. So you know, different from scripture, but not every area is all encompassing. And maybe love is overriding uh principle there to say if I love her, I won't do that. And so maybe it's they're rooted in spiritual things. So I, I can go with you there. Okay, so when uh so Stephanie asked if there was a difference with, I'm not even gonna try to answer this question. Okay. Uh, but, but sometimes question I, I forget I forget what the question was. Okay. Um uh, and uh thank y'all for participating in the in the Mount Rushmore Challenge. But, but I, I you know I, I was blessed, you know. I was blessed. I, I mean I thank I, thank y'all. I
I was blessed by, and it, it was so much joy for me to uh, uh, to uh, honor, uh, you know, one of the 